Hello everyone, Thatcher in today's first video, doing Jeremy Friday for today's first video. So as was on a Friday, we've got your month ahead, look ahead, and it can take us into the second half of that April. We're going to compare the JMA uh, with the CFSB2, and we're going to see what these uh, two long range models are showing uh, for the next four weeks. I'll say that takes us into the second half of April. So I'll get on that for you very shortly, just say that the uh, second video update coming up later on this afternoon will be your regular week's 10 day. Uh, video update and that will have all of the usual features that will be with you um later on this afternoon uh right so i'm going to begin uh with the uh, jma 500 build our uh, height anomalies from the arctic and north pole view down so uh of course this is the uh north pole of the uh northern hemisphere just here I've got the Arctic, a more sort of wide um, wide Arctic uh, around there and then mid latitudes are through here uh, so blue is extrapolating to below average heights, which is uh, low pressure, yellow, orange, and red, to above average heights, which is high pressure. Uh, these uh, charts are broken down into weekly periods. So the first week period will take us from the uh, 20th through to the 27th of March. The uh, coming week will have quite a lot of low pressure out to the northwest of the country in the North Atlantic and up towards Greenland. That's ongoing uh, from the pattern through the whole of winter, of course, with being tanks per the vortex that we've had through this winter and lots of low pressure within the northern latitudes. So that goes on. Uh, the difference, though, is that we've got an area of above average heights over Scandinavia and extending into the UK and then out into the Atlantic. So it's still broadly the same pattern we've been in through most of the winter, but the difference is that the jet stream pushed a bit further northwards. It's a bit weaker anyway due to the uh, cyclical change of year. Now we're getting further on in spring, spring equinox today, of course. Um, so we're under this high pressure over Scandinavia, and we could be bringing quite a chilly, sort of easterly type flow uh, into the country. But the main thing is that uh, it's a good deal drier than we've had for quite some time with high pressure, well and truly dominating the weather. Then we go through to week two. This takes us from the 27th of March to the 3rd of April. The above average heights continue. So, um, yes, above average heights centred to uh, both the north and to the west and to the northeast. So it's a large area of high pressure. And it is hinting at being sort of a little bit of norm blocking uh, as well. It will be bringing in an easterly wind uh, from um, the continent. Heights lowering to the south as well, so through the Med, things looking quite unsettled now. Uh, jet stream is being pushed southwards down into the Mediterranean. We're going to have a lot of dry weather with that, uh, if it's right. Could be a little bit more unsettled down in the south, though, if that trough of low pressure to our south was to, um, you know, sort of push up in towards France and some parts of England, and that could bring some rain into the south. But otherwise, it looks relatively settled, but the only thing with it is that we could be bringing in some quite cool sort of east to northeasterly winds. That's what I'd have to watch out for uh, with that pattern. And we go through to weeks three and four, which takes us from the 3rd through to the 17th of April. And overall, we look high and dry here. We've got an area of above average heights now pretty much centred over the top of the UK and Ireland. But low average heights are away to the north, jet stream pushed northwards. So I would anticipate that will be mainly dry. There will be a lot of dry weather on offer with that. And you would have thought temperatures would be um, staging a bit of a recovery as well. I would have thought we were losing that sort of easterly to northeasterly influence. So perhaps relatively spring-like there as we go into the middle of April. Of course, you would expect the middle of April to be properly spring-like. And uh, that doesn't look too bad, an anomaly at all, I would have thought. Uh, so this is a tropical and mid-latitude view. So the British Isles with this is in the top right-hand corner of the chart as you're looking at it, we're just there. We can't see the Arctic and the North Pole because we just had a look at that view down, that's off the chart up here. But a reminder of the uh, week, um, the week uh, one 500 mm high dominant. So there's an area of high pressure up over Scandinavia just there and just about make it out over here as well. Uh, and the ridge chain extends through the UK and into the Atlantic also. Looks as though we would probably be bringing in something of an easterly influence in uh, the week ahead. Precipitation anomalies look pretty dry, really, away from the very far north of Scotland. We're dry of an average there with uh, the JMA week one rainfall anomaly. It is a bit on the cold side, though. The temperature anomaly 
is uh, below average for this week, especially so for England and Wales. 20th to 27th of March does look pretty cold. We haven't seen many um, cold and average temperature anomalies on these charts in the past few months. So that's a little bit of a um, little bit of a turn up for the books, I think, really. But uh, we've got to the end of uh, March, and there we are. We've got a cold and average temperature anomaly with the JMA in the week ahead. Week two is looking like this. So again, it has the above average heights uh, both to the west, to the northwest, and to the north and northeast of us. Uh, quite a bit of low pressure down through Mediterranean down here. And again, it looks like it's probably bringing in wind from an east to uh, northeasterly direction. It's another dry of an average week. High pressure's in control of the weather. So yes, uh, we begin April on a relatively dry note. We do have to watch out those areas of low pressure to our south pushing north and possibly bringing rain into southern areas. But the GMA doesn't show that has been rainfall with those low pressures mostly restricted to like um, Spain and also to uh, Mediterranean as well. It's a big change this on the pattern that we've had for several months, I have to say. Very significant pattern change. And then the temperature anomaly is also, again, looking quite cold, really, um, for week two, 27th of March to the 3rd of April. Yes, below average temperatures, especially so for England, Wales, and also for Ireland. So quite a cold couple of weeks to start us off. And then we move through to weeks three and four, and this one takes us from the 3rd through to the 17th of April, and now the above average heights uh, high pressure essentially is centering over top of the country. So it looks like we, uh, we are into a proper anticyclonic spell of weather. Jet stream should be pushing north as well. There's low pressure around here. Jet stream, the jet stream should be pushing uh, north. So you expect this to be another relatively dry week. That's what Molly showed. Drive and average conditions continue. So finally, we're going to get a very extended period of much drier weather. So that's the main the main thing i think for most people who have uh, who are absolutely fed up with all of the rain that we've had over the past few months we are if this is right going to a much more extended period of dry weather temperatures still look a little bit on the lowly side they're still not really picking up a great deal we've gone from cold average to near normal um but it's not it's not a particularly uh, mild couple of weeks to say the least it might be a bit transitional though uh, so it could be something like week three is still relatively cool and then week four goes much milder much milder you can't rule out something like that but overall just a little bit of an increase in the temperature there from the third to the 17th of april uh but the main thing is that uh, we are much much drier for the next four weeks if the jma has got this right Let's uh, compare with the CFSV2. So again, these are 500 mil of our heights. So I break it down into weekly periods. The first week period will take us from the 20th of March to the 26th. And the coming week is dominated by high pressure to our east and northeast. The Scandinavian high is in. Low pressure is pushed out to the northwest. Winds are in from an easterly direction. So again, we see a lot of dry weather with that. And potentially rather on the cold side as well. Uh, it goes on into week uh, two also. This is 27th of March, 2nd of April. Scandinavian high is in control. It's back into west of Russia and the ridge is building to the north of Scotland as well. Winds again in from the east. Notice below pressure down to the south through Spain into the Mediterranean. So obviously it's more unsettled uh, down here with some, I would have thought, um, very welcome and much needed rain. Further north though, we're relatively dry except we do have to watch out for that trough of low pressure, particularly in the south to um, bring the risk of some rain to southern areas but essentially we're under high pressure centered over Scandinavia winds are in from the east it could be quite cold though it could be quite a cold start to April and really good agreement actually between the JMA and the CFSV2 for the next couple of weeks uh, week three is the 3rd to the 9th of April now we're taking the high pressure over towards Greenland so it's called retrogression retrogression i should say where we um, take the high pressure uh from east to west in that direction uh that's opposed to the zonal flow which is west to east of course this winter has been very zonal winter just gone uh everything has been moving from west to east that's a typical zonal flow but when um pressure goes against the zonal flow we call that retrogression and that's what we're seeing here in week three from the third to the ninth of april the high pressure uh, is centering towards Greenland, and that's allowing an undercut of low pressure underneath it. So that is still quite cold, but it's also more unsettled, potentially. 
Uh, winds are probably in from the northeast, but watch out for this trough low pressure to potentially bring some quite wet weather, particularly to more southern parts of the country. And then we're into week four, which is the 10th to the 16th of April. Trough of low pressure then is centred over Scandinavia, but it also backs to Greenland. Otherwise, not much else going on. There's no particularly notable area of high pressure. And I think we could be reverting to more of a westerly type pattern with that. Um, maybe going a little bit more unsettled. So if you get further on into April, actually, I think the CFS is more unsettled compared to... To, um, to the JMA. The JMA is relatively anticyclonic as we go on into weeks three and four, further into uh, April. But uh, the CFS does look as though it could be a bit more unsettled to me. Now, temperature anomalies are quite interesting with the CFS V2. Week one temperature anomaly from the 20th to 26th of March is below average. Look at that, cold and average with CFS V2 for the UK and for Ireland. How many times have we been able to say that over the past few uh, bumps not very often at all. There we go. We've got both the JMA and the CFS in agreement that the coming week is a colder or has a colder than average temperature anomaly. And it goes even colder, actually, that anomaly into week two. Look at this. It's the 27th of March to the 2nd of April. Really quite substantially colder than average on the temperature scale. It looks like we're going down to around two to two and a half degrees below average. Uh, from the 27th of March to the 2nd of April. That's as we bring in most easterly winds, of course. So, um, yes, the CFSV2 definitely seeing a, a, a really cold end to uh, March and beginning to April compared to average. Of course, it won't be as cold as if this pattern had set up in January because we're in the middle of spring. But nevertheless, it is a cold of an average um, temperature normally has been forecast from both models uh, for weeks one and two. And the CFS is colder than the JMA, actually, with its temperature anomaly. Week 3 is the 3rd to the 9th of April. Still hints of being a little bit below average even then, but rather less so. And then week 4, yes, finally we see a recovery in the temperature. It's the 10th to the 16th of April, and the temperature then is beginning to lift up, and it's starting to go milder. So that's when we properly get on uh, with spring, I suppose. Lastly, we've got precipitation anomalies from the CFSV2 for the next four weeks. So this is week one precipitation anomaly going from the 20th, 26th of March. Near normal precipitation in week a little bit wetter than average across the far north and west. Week two looks drier than average. It's 27th of April to uh, 27th of March, 7th to the 2nd of April, and it's rather drier than average there, especially to northern and western parts of the country. Week 3, the signal is weakening now. Uh, it's the 3rd to the 9th of April, near normal, but precipitation or no signal. And the same is true for week 4, the 10th to 16th of April, also has no signal. Remember, this is when it looks like we might start turning a little bit more unsettled, though, as we go further on into, uh, into April. So, quite an interesting update from the JMA uh, um, CFSV2 today. Quite an interesting JMA Friday. It's very different, this pattern, to what we've had over the past few weeks and several months, you have to say. It's looking a lot colder as we come, compared to average, as we come to the end of March and into April. Lot of dry weather on offer, though, and the JMA wants to keep things dry pretty much for the next four weeks. Of course, it won't be completely dry. There will be showers coming and going There'll be weak weather fronts and, and things like that. So it won't be totally dry for four weeks. That would be very unusual to do. But we can do that. Sometimes you get a whole month of universally dry weather. But it is really unusual to do that. So there will be rain at times. But certainly the JMA go for a much, much drier four weeks than we've had for a very long time. The CFS, though, after a cold, and it is really quite cold indeed, and uh, quite dry start, first couple of weeks, looks like it's going more unsettled to me as we go further on into April. So there is a bit of a difference there between the two miles, but otherwise, certainly looks like a cold start to April and a relatively dry start to April as well. It may get more unsettled later on. Right, that's it for uh, Jamie Fraser this week. Remember, it's just a snapshot of what money's showing. It could all look completely different uh, next week. Any forecast beyond five, seven days uh, comes with a big pinch of salt. Uh, but uh, that's what Jeremy and Shane today. We'll do, do it all over again uh, next week. We'll be back later on with your week to 10 day be update, including all of the regular features. So come back to that then. Uh, but that's all for now. And thanks for watching.